la 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 Hello wizards, so in this video, I will show you how to quickly model and analyze a concrete structure using ETAPS 2016. So the building will have uh, 6 stories each with 12 feet in height. The building will have 4 by 3 bays in X and Y respectively with lengths 22 feet and 18 feet respectively. The slab thickness will be 8 inch, eight inches and the building will be subjected to both gravity and wind loads. So our goal for uh, this structure or for this video is to show the reaction and the deformed structure. So without further ado, so first we will open the program. Okay, so in the file menu, we will press the new model okay so in the model initialization dialog box we will select use built-in settings with so the display unit will be us customary or uh, english unit so press ok so the the number of grid lines in x direction will be 5 since the there will be 4 base in x direction and the number of grid lines in y direction will be 4 since there will, there there are 3 base in y direction the spacing of grids in x direction uh, will be 22 22 feet and the spacing of grids in y direction will be 18 feet okay Next is the number of stories. The number of stories will be 6 and the typical story height will be 12, 12 feet. So in this particular structure, we will select a template which is a flat slab with perimeter beams. So here, first we will define the materials of the members. First is the column. So we need to click the ellipsis here and add a new property so to add a new property we will select a rectangular concrete so after that we will first we will change the the name of the material okay so we'll change it to column and uh, the dimension of the column will be 24 by 24 feet, 24 inches. 
So after that, we will check the property modifiers. Uh, nothing will change here. And the, reinf uh, the, the reinforcement, we will check if the design type we selected is for column, which is P-M2-M3 design. So it is selected, so nothing will change here. So okay. Okay. Next is for the beam. We will define uh, the property of the beam. So add new property. Again, it is a rectangular concrete. So we will, we will rename the, the, the property beam. Okay. So the dimension of the of the beam will be 30 by 24 inches. So property modifier, nothing will change here. Nothing will, uh, will change. For the reinforcement, we need to make sure that we select the, the design type for beam, which is M3 design. Okay. So click OK. Okay. 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 So for slab, we will click the ellipsis at the side and we will need to select slab 1 and press OK. So next is the, the gravity loads. We will apply the gravity loads. So the dead loads, we will use 25 pound per feet squared. Next for the live load, we will apply 80 pound per feet squared. The restraints at the bottom should be fixed since it is uh, a concrete uh, 3D concrete structure. Press OK and then okay. So as of now the, the program will generate the structure. So as you can see it is already generated. So the next thing we will do is to create a we will create um, floor openings in each story. So these floor openings will be used for the elevator core or we will put some shear wall in the structure. So for that, we will select uh, draw rectangular floor or wall. So at the bottom left, we will check the property and uh, click the drop down menu and select opening since we are creating opening in each floor. Another thing to consider is the lower right corner. We should select all stories so that everything that we will do in the plan view will be replicated or applied in all stories. So we will create the opening from grid point C, drag it up to grid point D2. Okay. So as you can see, it is applied in all levels. So next thing we will do is to remove the columns, the surrounding columns of the opening. So to remove that, first we press escape so that uh, we will be able to create a new uh, material. So before we create the, before we put the shear wall, we will need to remove the columns by clicking uh, holding the control button while clicking the, the column. So there will be a dialog box uh, that will appear and press the column. So clicking the column will select only the column part of that particular intersection. So as you can see, all columns on the building on that part is selected. So we will apply that on other four columns surrounding the, the, the opening. So press uh, control and select the column, press OK, control and press the column, select column, then the last one, select column. Okay, so we can now delete, we can press, uh, we can press delete. Okay, so as you can see, uh, it is already done, so there, you can see the opening in each story so after that we will create the the we'll add the shear wall so to add the shear wall we should uh, we click draw in the drum in the menu bar and we will click draw wall stacks so 
in here we can see different uh, shapes uh, predefined shapes but here we will uh, select the each shape okay so we, we need to adjust the dimensions because we have a certain uh, dimension of of the slab or of or the opening so we will change the dimension so 18 11 then for the, the thickness will be 14 all are 14 inches okay so we will click ok so as you can see here uh, the orientation of the of the shear wall we created is not compatible with the opening so for it to be fixed we need to see the property of object here and the angle of degree or the angle of rotation we will write 90 degrees so that it, it will rotate in 90 degrees okay Okay, it's done so this is the the structure so the next thing we will do is to uh, apply the loads uh, check the loads so for the loads we will in the model explorer we can see the load we should ex expand it and go to the load patterns so as you can see there are two load patterns which is dead and live loads so the next thing we will do is to add the wind load. To add the wind load, we should right click the load patterns and add a new load pattern. So we will name it as wind. The type will be wind. The self multiplier will be zero. And the auto lateral load, we will select ASCE 7 10. So we will add it to the load patterns. And press OK. So, as you can see here in wind, if we modify, so, when we click modify lateral load, uh, we should uh, be reminded that exposure from extents of diaphragm should be, uh, should be selected because it allows the program to apply wind loads of varying magnitudes and directions. So, it is uh, applied here, so nothing will, nothing, we will do nothing here, okay. Press OK and then press OK here. So next thing we will do is to add the P delta effect to the wind load case. P delta effect is a uh, should I say is another parameter that should we should need to consider, particularly here in tall structures. So to add uh, to add the P delta effect to the wind load case, we will go to the model explorer. Uh, expand the load case branch so as you can see here in wind in the load case for the wind we will right click click modify or show so here the, the P delta or nonlinear stiffness we will uh, we will click modify or show and here we will use iterative based on loads so selecting this will be much slower than to non-iterative which is based on mass but it is more uh, accurate compared to the other one so we will we will write the load the scale factor for dead load which is uh, 1.2 and add next is for the live load which is the scale factor is 0.5 and press add so click ok ok so we're done and the next thing we'll do is to run the analysis so in an analyze uh, button here in the menu bar we'll, we will run the analysis so before we run the analysis we should save the the file so right here uh, 3d complete saves so after that the, the program will run the analysis so while waiting 
uh, we will expect uh, here to see the 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 reaction and the deformed shape of the structure. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, we, uh, we can see here in the 3D view the deformed shape of the structure. So we can see the animation of the deformed shape. So here you can see the, the movement of how it will deform. So next, next here in, uh, plan, in the 2D view, uh, we can uh, see the deformed view by clicking here in the mod in the model explorer. Click display the model windows and plan view. But here it is be uh, it is better to see it in elevation view. Okay. Okay. So here in elevation view. We can see the deformed structure. Display. So deformed structure, the deformed shape. So that will be the deformed shape. We can also see the uh, see the animation of how it will deform. So for the uh, support or spring reaction, we can uh, see that through model explorer display and here expand the display and select for support and spring reactions there you can see the the reaction on different joints not only on the bottom part of the structure but on different uh, joints and there okay so here you can change the uh, the frame because here we only selected A, so to change that, because uh, if you want to see the frame or the reactions on frame B, you just click here in elevation view and select B. Okay, so there, you can see the different uh, reactions on joints here on letter B. So that's all. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Thank you.